Hello, this is Gogi from Gogi Dartin, and you're watching the unboxing and review of Lava Iris Pro 30. This is the first handset in the Pro series. Here is the box pack. Let's quickly go through the specifications as mentioned on the box. This handset sports a 4.7 inch OGS screen with HD resolution and uh, Corning Gorilla Glass protection with full laminated touch panels. Running on Android 4.2 with 8MP rear auto focus camera with BSI sensor and a front 3 megapixel camera. Other features are Wi Fi, Bluetooth, uh, there is 1GB RAM, 4GB internal storage, 2000mAh battery, 3G supported of up to 42Mbps. Let's start the unboxing process. Here is the handset, the Lava Iris Pro 3.0. We'll have a look at this later inside the box. You will find the data cable, power adapter, earphone with a very big call button and mic, and here is a closer view of the earplug. Inside the box, you will also find the user manual. Know your device, this is the quick start guide and uh, the warranty certificate. A screen guard is also included, which uh, isn't required actually because uh, it's clearly mentioned in the box that it's with Corning Gorilla Glass protection. And here is the Lava Iris Pro 3.0. I'm going to peel off the factory film. The side view and uh, this is the rear view. As you can see the front side glass is completely black even the touch sensitive buttons are hardly visible. On the top there is the sensor, in call speaker and the 3 megapixel front camera. Iris Pro 3.0 is all about looks. The handset has got an excellent design, excellent build quality, in fact it looks almost like an iPhone. Here is a closer view of the side. It's a greyish black metallic finish. On the rear side it's a matte finish and on the front uh, you have the glass. The finishing is very good as you can see. On the rear side there is the speaker out vent, the lava logo, the Iris Pro 3.0 text in the center and the 8 megapixel rear autofocus camera with dual LED flash and the mic. Power button and the bottom rockers are placed on the right side. Here is the closer view of the rear cover. The rear cover is quite flexible. It's plastic and of a good quality. There's a built-in 2000 mAh non-removable battery but it can be removed using these screws here. But it's clearly mentioned that the user should not remove this battery. Doing so will void the warranty. This is a dual SIM handset. You can see the normal SIM slot, SIM 1 and this is the micro SIM slot, SIM 2 and here is the micro SD card slot. The handset weight with battery is 115 grams. Thickness is 7.91 mm. Breadth is 66.88 mm and the length is 137.97 mm. Let's power on. I have set the brightness to automatic. Here is the home screen. The performance looks good. You can see the backlit buttons here lighting up and now it's off hardly visible touch is very smooth and responsive this answer also came pre-installed with the backup and restore app office suit here is the phone dialer with video call option the built-in fm radio but for hotspot usb and bluetooth tethering is supported wireless display is also supported 1.48 GB is allocated for apps of which 1.3 GB is available and uh, 0.93 GB as the phone storage. Here is the internal storage 1.3 GB free and of the 1 GB RAM you get around 613 MB free. The viewing angle looks pretty good. This handset is using the same hardware that we have seen on many other handsets like the Micromax A116 and the Lava Iris 504Q. The system information Cortex A7 1.2 GHz, it's quad core. With power VR SGX544 MP GPU, the hardware is MT6589 running on the Android 4.2.1 with screen resolution of 1280 by 720 pixels. There is accelerometer, proximity, light orientation, and magnetic sensor. I'm going to install a Compass app and uh, going to test that out. The magnetic sensor is working. Before I run the benchmark applications, the time is 10.25 pm, battery at 47% and the temperature at 29 degrees. Quadrant benchmark score is 4042 
and total score is 13,881. The Vilamo benchmark is still working but I want to divert the attention for a while on this LED notification. There is a LED notification on the Pro 30. Vilamo score HTML5 1443 Metal 447. Nina Mark 2 is uh, 44.9 FPS. This handset supports, well, uh, I think it's, uh, yes, it's 10 point multi touch. There is also this CPU monitoring app. I ran these benchmark applications for around 21 minutes. The battery level dropped by 6% and the temperature rose to 32 degrees. I've connected a pen drive using the OTG cable and as you can see OTG is supported. There is the Lava Care application that gives you the service center address based on the state and the city. And now let's check out the camera. The, this is the rear camera with HDR and panorama options and many other options. The interface is the same that we have seen on many other handsets. These picture size is 8 megapixel as you can see. It's 8 megapixel and in uh, full screen it's 6 megapixel. You can record full HD videos using this handset. The front camera is of 3 megapixel resolution. I'm recording a video and this video was recorded in uh, 1080p resolution at uh, 30 frames per second. You can play full HD videos in both hardware as well as software mode. Color reproduction is very good. The Lava Iris Pro 3.0 is powered by 1.2 GHz quad core processor running Android 4.2 with 1 GB RAM and 4 GB internal storage. There is 8 MP rear autofocus camera with dual LED flash and a front camera of 3 megapixel resolution. The touchscreen is 4.7 inches supporting HD resolution and there is a 2000 mAh built-in battery. Other features are 3G, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and GPS. OTG is supported and you can also save and install apps on the external storage. The key highlight is its gorgeous look. It is slim and extremely lightweight at 114 grams. This answer is priced at approximately 15,000. It's a bit pricey but then it's all about the looks. For full review sample images and videos visit my website kogi.in.